When using the custom design tool, begin by maximizing your window. And that way you can see as well as you possibly can all of the elements of your design. The next step is to measure your surface. This is really, really important as we don't take returns on custom designs, so you want to be sure that your decals will fit in your space really well. So once you've measured, go ahead and input the dimensions here. You can do it with feet and inches or just inches if that's easier. Then choose the wall color. Keep in mind that there is no background on your decals. There's only the vinyl decals that will be going on the wall. And the color that you're choosing in this step is simply to help you imagine what the decals would look like on your own wall. So choose a color that is really close to your actual wall color and select OK. From here, we'll need to input our text. I'll go ahead and just select that and start typing. And once you've created some text, you can make some modifications. You can change the fonts, change the colors. You can even change the justification. But maybe you want to have several different fonts or colors within one design. Then you'll need to add a layer. A text layer will add another layer of text, which is independently editable from the other layers of text. And an embellishment layer will help you add an embellishment. So we'll start by creating several text layers, and I'll do so by selecting some of the text I already made and pressing Control X, which will cut that out. And then I will add my text layer. Select the text there and press Control V. Now that will paste the text that I had already made. Now each text layer will revert to the default fonts and colors, so you'll have to change it again but this time I'm going to go for something kind of scripty and, and an accent color to go with it. Now I like how these look, but I want them to be different sizes. I want this word Williams to be really, really large and this now and forever to be really small. So I'm going to repeat the previous steps and create another layer. You can change the categories of fonts by clicking these tabs above. And you can always change your mind over and over until you get the look you like the best. And the sizing is not quite right, so to change the size, you can use these. You can either click once to increase a size, or you can hold it down to increase several sizes. Now I've set my width of my surface here. This full width is 4 feet and 8 inches, and I don't want my design to extend the entire width. I do want to give it a little bit of margin. In my case, that's how I measured it and input it, so that I would be able to see the entire space and then just choose the size of the margins by looking at the screen. And you can choose how you want to do that however you like. Now I'm centering all of my text, even though they are all one line things, so it's not really going to matter, but it's just going to help me line up these click here to drag tab so that I can make it centered as much as I can. But honestly, this isn't really critical at this step because our design, each layer, is going to come individually, so you can position it however you prefer. So the lining it up using the custom design tools really just to help you get a visual idea and not really going to be set in stone. Now if you'd like to see what your design will look like without all of these tabs and measurements in the way, just click this preview button on the top right of the tool. If you need to make any changes, you can simply select the layer you'd like to change and you'll get the tabs and numbers back again. Now one problem that you may run into is if you want to select something that's behind a layer. And the way to resolve that is to select the layer that keeps getting in the way and press this button down at the bottom that says send selected layer to back. And that way you can select the layer that was being covered. This will also be great if you want to see how overlapping letters will look in different combinations. 
but keep in mind that you'll control that when you're applying it based on which layer you apply to the wall first. Now I like this design, however it is not using up as much of the height as I'd hoped, so I'm going to add an embellishment layer. When I click this button I'm given a menu that has all of these different categories of embellishments. So I will choose from the brackets and dividers category, and that will pull up a lot more options that are simply brackets and dividers. Now when you choose your embellishment, it will automatically pop into your screen. The tricky thing is, it will always go to the top left corner, so if it's really, really small, you may not be able to see it right away. Just look up there and you'll spot it. Drag it where you'd like it to go and size it the same way you would with a text layer. Now the size is being shown here with these size arrows and that's just to show you what it is exactly is being measured. So for example, the arrows on this only extend to the very edges of this layer. If I were to add a Y here, you can see this arrow would extend lower. And that is because I added a letter that actually changes the size of this layer. The font size did not change. I just had a descending letter that made the measurement arrow adjust. Now I'm going to change the color of this embellishment, same way I would with a text layer. And try to center it a little better. And preview. So you can see basically how you can use layers to create a really artistic look. A new feature that we've added is this rotate and mirror feature. Now the mirror image feature you typically won't want to use on text. It will actually make your text be backwards because this, the way that we have it laid out here, that's really how it's going to look on your wall. So you don't want to mirror image text unless you're planning to apply your text say for example on the inside of a window and you want people to be able to read it from the outside then is the only time you would mirror image text. Embellishments on the other hand can be mirrored if you just want them to face a different direction. And what I mean by that is, let's see, we'll go back to the embellishments category and I'll just choose a cute little butterfly. Now you can see what I mean when I say mirror image, it just looks the other direction. And that's really, really handy, especially for embellishments. Now I want this to be mirror image and pretty much a lot smaller. And I want this to be a different color and it's not quite the right angle. So I'm going to rotate it. And you can see how that works, pretty self-explanatory there. And there you go. So those are the basics of rotating and the mirror image tool. Now let's say you select this add text layer button and you really didn't mean to press that, you don't want it, or you had been experimenting with something you don't want to keep it anymore and you want to get rid of it. Don't delete it by pressing the backspace button because then you'll be left with this tab here that will be frustrating when it's in your shopping cart and it's just a blank layer and don't try to move it off the screen because it's still there. The way that you want to get rid of a layer is to click this trash can button to delete the layer that's selected. Now I'm just going to click on this preview button one last time. Make sure that there isn't any design, text, or embellishment that is off the edge of my space because if it goes off the edges, that means it won't fit in the space that I measured. So you will make sure that everything is contained within this box. And as long as that looks good, then double check your spelling. Remember, you can't return custom designs, so you want to make sure that the spelling is accurate. And if there's any punctuation, grammar, anything like that, just double check and make sure you've got everything the way that you need it to be. Now one thing that our designers will do is make sure that the spacing between your letters is really attractive. So if you find that there are some gaps or large spaces between letters that aren't visually appealing, you don't need to worry too much about that because our designers will go into the design and fix it when they're creating the design on the vinyl. When it's proofread and ready to go, then you can click Add to Cart. And what that will do is put the custom design in your cart and take you to the cart itself.
Now you can see the layers written here. They're not in a specific order. The order refers to pretty much to the order that you last touched each layer. So it's not really important. You will get each layer on its own piece, so you'll be positioning them and laying them out how you like. Now, if you have any questions or want to go change something about your design, you can click any of this, these links, either here, 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 or here. And you'll be able to look at your design again. That way you can make sure that it is exactly as you remember. Or if you need to make a change, for example, let's say I want to put my little butterfly on the other side. Then you make the changes you need and press Add to Cart. Now you'll notice, though, that I have two in my cart. And what that did is it took the original version and it left it in my cart. Then when I changed it, I actually created a newer version. Now the newest design will always be added to the bottom. So if you want to keep your new design but not the original, you can just click on this shopping cart with an X to remove it from your cart and that way you'll just keep the one version of this design. This is a great feature if, for example, you've created a layout that you like, but you're giving it as a gift and want to change some names. Then when your second version of the design is ready, you can just click Add to Cart, and you'll now have both versions of the design, and you can purchase them both. Now one last question that you may have is about pricing. And basically the way that this tool will calculate the price is based on the amount of characters that you use, so letters, punctuation, or embellishments, and then the size of those characters. You won't be charged extra for having additional layers or for using several different colors. You'll only be charged per letter or character or embellishment and based on the size. Don't worry about the pricing, the tool will calculate all of that for you. So all you have to do is unleash your creative genius, and thank you for watching our tutorial today, and I hope it will help you to make a statement with your decor.